Part of the commitment that uh, TBN is showing is a commitment and a lean in towards the next generation. Uh, I, I, I believe that our next guest, which some of you may see on the youth channel, uh, Juice, uh, you've seen him before. And he, I've been uh, fortunate to host him uh, once before. This is a truly gr great gifted man of God. Someone I believe that the mantle uh, and the transitioning that's happening from one generation to the next, that this man, it's resting on him to be a voice to this generation, a voice that helps us to understand the Holy Spirit and the supernatural work of God that is still alive and well today and about to be proclaimed by the next generation, a great leader of that generation, uh, David Hernandez. Welcome him with me. Would you do that? So you are, you're passionate yes, about sir. the work of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And one of the things that's been on my heart lately is to minister on becoming carriers of the glory of God. I believe that when you begin to seek the Lord, because he promised in Jeremiah chapter 29, 13, that if you seek me with all your heart, you'll find me. That's a promise from God. I've heard people say, well, you know, I've sought the Lord with all that I am, and I didn't really get anywhere. But the truth is that God promises when we seek him with all our hearts, when we give our attention to the countenance of Christ, mm. when we filled with passion, as the psalmist David wrote in Psalm 42, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. Mm. When we, with that type of desperation, that type of hunger, begin to seek the presence of the Holy Spirit, begin to seek what his agenda, because the Holy Spirit, I believe, has agenda, on his agenda, nations. Mm. And when we connect with the Holy Spirit, we connect with the fullness of the power of heaven. When we receive the Holy Spirit, a lot of people think that the Holy Spirit is given in portions. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, you know, I'm not really mature enough. I'm not really elite enough, as if there was such a faction in spirituality. Mm. I'm not really grown enough. I'm not really to a place where I can really flow in the Holy Spirit. But I truly believe that God is about to break that mentality off of this generation. Because the truth is that the Holy Spirit is not a reward for the super spiritual, if ever there was such a group. The truth is that the Holy Spirit is the only chance we ever have at being spiritual or even desiring to be spiritual. Mm. So when we get saved, we receive the Holy Spirit in fullness. God doesn't withhold. Besides, you can't divide the eternal into portions. Mm. Half of infinity is infinity. So when the Holy Spirit comes to rest on a life, as the scripture says, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, Romans chapter 8, verse 11. That same Holy Spirit, which resurrected the Son of the living God, that same Holy Spirit, who hovered over the face of the deep in the book of Genesis, mm. that same Holy Spirit who healed through Peter's shadow, mm. that same Holy Spirit who Moses begged for when he said, Lord, how will we know? How will we be distinguished as a people unless your presence goes with us? That same Holy Spirit whom Enoch walked with in Genesis chapter 5, that same Holy mm. Spirit, that ancient Spirit of God, dwells in us in fullness. And when we carry that mantle, when we carry the presence, we're actually a continuation of the ministry of Jesus Christ here on the earth. Mm. We're a continuation because... He's given us the fullness of power. And so I believe that there are some watching that are in that season right now, and maybe they're watching this, and they're sensing in their heart this distance that seems to be created between them and God. The reality is that Jesus said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Yeah. So despite what we feel, whether or not we sense the nearness of his presence is not the issue. Because I believe that God will sometimes seemingly withdraw in according to our emotions, to cause us to be hungry to search for the depths. Mm. And so as the Lord, you may say, I feel like God is pulling away from me. It's not that God is pulling away. It's that you're becoming more hungry for all that mm. he is. And it's not that he's saying, I want to distance myself from you. He's saying, come deeper. Let me draw you into the depths of the spirit. And so when God begins to draw us into the depths of the spirit, when he begins to, by his spirit, reveal to us the fullness of Christ, mm. we become the carriers of the presence. I fully believe that when a believer walks into rooms, sickness needs to run out. Mm. That when a believer walks into rooms, demons start to tremble. Mm. We carry the essence of Jesus. Mm. We carry the fullness of his person. So we need to be magnetic because Jesus drew sinners. Jesus drew those who nobody wanted. And so when we carry that presence, we are walking in that mantle and we're drawing them to the fountain. We're drawing them to the depths and we're saying, come and drink, come and see, come and taste. The Lord is good. And when we carry that, we become little pieces of heaven here on earth. Yeah. We become atmospheres that wherever we step, we take dominion. We talk about the presence of God coming and going. I don't believe that's the case. We are the presence of God in the earth. Mm. 
His being has been united with us to where we become one with Him. So going back to that thing about desperation, that thought about desperation, and that's really what's been stirring in my heart, desperation. And you talked about this before, and, I, and by the way, I, I so appreciate your ministry, and mm. I just want to say I honor Pastor Phil Muncy, mm. and, and I just, I, I'm, I'm so appreciative of how, how you've spoken into my life, and, and how you're a voice of unification for the church, and I'm just, I'm so excited about all that God's doing with you, and I honor you as, a, as that, that younger generation coming in as one of our fathers. In other words, I'm an old man, yeah, no. <laughs> an experienced no. man, yeah. an experienced no. man. And so, but, but I, I do honor you, and be, well, you said something to me, and you talked about the spiritual vacuum that's been created in our nation. And I'm so excited about that because when there's a hunger, there's that search. You know, I keep thinking about that verse, Jeremiah 29, 13. If you seek me with all your heart, you'll find me. And as that desperation begins to rise, we begin to go to the scripture. Mm. And when we read the scripture, we're not just looking at words. Jesus said in John chapter 6, the very words that I speak to you are spirit and life. Yeah. They, are the, they are Christ. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit, as he did in the beginning in the book of Genesis, when he spoke in the book of Genesis, when, when God spoke the creation, the Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the deep. On God's word, the Holy Spirit put power and creation took place. When we get into the word, mm. we're not just reading a biography. We are meeting with the author. Mm. And the Holy Spirit will take those words, which are spirit and life, and he begins to vivify the Savior. Mm. He begins to cause the healer to become more real, mm. the deliverer to become more real. Mm. And when we, with the eyes of our heart, filled with desperation, mm. look at the majestic countenance of Christ, everything in the background fades. Mm. And we're raptured mm. by his essence. Yeah. And we're pulled in. Mm. And that comes from desperation. Another thing that happens when we're desperate is that we get back in our prayer closets. I am a firm believer that I know God loves us. I know God blesses us. But God will shake things up to get you back on your face in prayer. Amen. And he will, he will move things up. You may be watching this right now Come on. and saying, I'm shaken. I'm, I'm, I'm in a place where I feel like God is distant. I feel like something's been... Let me tell you something. Let me promise you Come something. On. Jesus said, I'll say it again. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's a promise from That's the Savior. That's the highest authority. He's not going to leave you. When you sense that moving away, it's not that God is pushing you away. It's that he's getting ready to draw you into something that you've never known before. And in fact, when there's that shaking, when there's that stirring, when, when things around you seem to be chaotic, what God is doing in you is cultivating a hunger for him. We may sometimes, because of blessing or because of position or because of some idea or form of success, come to the place where we do this, I do this all the time, and, and the Lord has to correct me too, where there are times where the Lord has to bring me back to the place where say, wait a minute, you're still a man in need of a Savior. You're still a man in need of direction. You're still a man in need of the Holy Spirit. And so sometimes God will shake things. Sometimes there's a shaking in the finances. Sometimes there's shaking in the ministry. But whatever it is, God's going to draw you back because He is faithful. Yes. The Scripture says that He's faithful even when we are not. Right. And so this is not a matter of me getting more of the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit getting more of me. Wow. And when the Holy Spirit begins to draw me in, He's pulling me. With that desperation, he's using my circumstances. He's using my emotions. People say, and they ask as if it's a double entendre and I have to choose between the two. They say, do you want an experience with God or do you want an emotional experience? The truth is, an experience with God can sometimes be emotional. Yeah. And God wants to touch every aspect that he created. And so sometimes in your emotions, you may feel him move, but he's pulling you deeper. And so I want to say to you today, you may be discouraged. You may feel like there's darkness around you. You may feel like there's someone watching right now. There's a pastor watching me, and you, you hear me talking about the Holy Spirit, and you're saying, I remember when I talked about the Holy Spirit like that. Wow. I remember when I flowed like that. Yeah. Let me tell you something. The gifts and the call are without repentance. You've not lost the gift. You've Come not on. lost that Come anointing. On, the Holy Spirit still has that on you. And in fact, there's a stirring tape. There are pastors watching me right now. There's a stirring happening where Come there's on. been this exhaustion. God is now flowing, and he's flooding in, and the power of the Holy Spirit is moving right through that camera, right? through your screen and he's touching you reviving you and he's transforming your nature all over again mm. take back your prayer closet in jesus name mm. take back your study of the word in jesus name it's going to happen because the warfare the warfare is proof that there is spiritual activity and that celestial conflict that you feeling hovering about the air that you feel the chaos sometimes around you that is the battle for your call that is the battle for the anointing and so god will as he did with jacob 
sometimes break the hip and put us in a desperate place where we grab on him and say, Lord, change my nature. Mm. Transform me, Lord. I'm not letting you go. Come I on. cannot let you go because you're the source of all life. You're the resurrection and the life. You're the bread that came down from heaven. You are the way and you are the truth. You are the door to heaven. Jesus, you are the son of the living God. You're Come all on. that I ever wanted. There was a time where Jesus was all you ever wanted and you didn't study the word just to get a sermon. You studied to seek his face. That is coming back to you. That desperation is being stirred in you. And as this is happening, we become the presence of God. You know, you read in the book of Acts where, there, where we see Peter, and the scripture says that the people brought their friends, their sick loved ones to Peter that his shadow might fall upon them. The scripture doesn't actually say that Peter's shadow healed them. It says that the people thought that Peter's shadow healed them. Now, what would cause people to think that Peter's shadow had the power to heal? It's because the presence of Jesus was so tangible, so real, so intense, so vivid on, on Peter that whenever he walked around, miracles would happen all around him. I was in a church in the Midwest, and you know how it is. You preach at a church, and then you want to go talk to everybody afterwards. And so I'm in the lobby after the church service was over, and I'm just, you know, uh, uh, we're selling books. We're talking to people. And this woman walks by, and she's walking by me. I see her on the side of my eye. And she has this very distinct but obvious hobble to her walk. And as she's walking by me, she jolts up and sits up in her seat. Mm. And or sits up right where she is. And she goes, she, she looks around as if she'd forgotten something. And I, I was waiting to see what she did. And she turns around, she starts screaming at me. And I, I'll be honest, I freaked out a little bit. And so she starts <laughs> screaming at me. And she starts jumping up and down on her leg. She says, I had surgery in my, on my knee. And I've been walking with that limp for two years. I walked by you, something jumped off of you, and the pain jumped off. And so she's, she was walking around perfectly healed, and it was interesting. I asked the Lord about that, and he says, because I take up residence in you, and every so often I like to reach out and touch people. Wow. And when I got that revelation, I said, Lord, I know this is not just me. You may be sitting here, you're watching Pastor Phil, you're watching me, and there can sometimes be a disconnect because it's television, but I want to tell you something. Come on. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead not only dwells in me, it dwells in you. Come on, go there. And if I'm going to say anything today, I know desperation is that, that thought I'm on. But if you get desperate enough, you start to believe some crazy things. Crazy things like, hey, maybe God can use me too. Yeah. Crazy things like, maybe I'm not as unqualified as I thought I was. Mm. Here's the truth, and I love the way Catherine Coleman said it. She said, God is not looking for golden vessels. He's not looking for silver vessels. He's looking for yielded vessels. Mm. Yeah. And the truth is that you, as a carrier of the glory of God, as a carrier of the presence of God, you become ministry. You don't have to try to change it. I remember I was in an elevator ride. I was speaking at a conference, and I was taking an elevator ride down to the bottom lobby floor. And these two women walk in. And Pastor Phil, it was a weird This doesn't happen all the time, but this was a weird experience for me. It was one of the first times this happened. They walk into the elevator, and they start trembling mm. and crying. Mm. And I looked at them, and to be honest, I didn't really want to ask. I didn't know what was going on. I thought maybe there was a personal issue. I didn't want to be, you know, nosy or anything. But they kept looking right at me, crying like that. And so finally I asked just before we hit the floor, I, the bottom floor, I said, what, what is going on with you right now? What, what, what's happening? Why are you crying? And one of the girls says, I feel something on you, mm. and I feel my whole body shaking, like electricity moving up and down my being. Now that has nothing to do with me. That has everything to do with the presence of the Holy Spirit. And if you become someone who's desperate, you become someone who seeks the face of Jesus, you become someone upon whom the Holy Spirit can place his power, then you'll walk in that boldness. You'll walk in that authority. You'll walk in that heavenly atmosphere, and you become that. Oh. I truly believe that Yeah. with all my heart. No, no. I, I, you know, I, the presence of God is here very strong right now. Yeah. And uh, I, I just want you, to, I want you to help people to come. I think you've connected a dot of uh, sometimes desperation, we condemn ourselves during these times. We don't recognize that it's, right. a, it's a real opportunity that when you feel distance from God, it's the Holy Spirit trying to break the, the soul realm from the spirit. It's very hard to know the difference. And our soul and spirit, the Bible says, only the word of God can do that. And it's in desperation when the soul is sober and, and a bit uh, not in charge that the Holy Spirit can quicken and make that separation. So desperation sometimes uh, separates the soul from the spirit realm, and people are afraid of that. 
right. and they need to lean in. I want you to help us and pray with people, uh, especially when you were talking about pastors. I believe that right now the Lord's going to use you to release the presence of God in people's lives. Just follow after the Lord in these moments. Well, I'm, I'm led of the Holy Spirit right now to pray for you. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe this, that as you're watching this, that there's going to be a connection by faith with heaven. Mm. And as we pray today, I want you to join your faith with mine. And let's believe God for breakthrough to visit. I mean, I can pray for a myriad of things, but I want to focus on this. Mm. I want to pray that God would reward you in the season of desperation for your seeking. In other words, that he would give you a greater prayer life, that he would give you a greater hunger for the word. Yes. As I came out here and talked tonight, the Holy Spirit spoke to me back there, and this idea of desperation is what's on his heart. Because when we are desperate, and when we, like you said, lean in, that's when the connection happens. Mm. So as we pray, I would mm. like to join my faith with yours. I want you to stretch your hands toward, toward your TV screen or your phone, however you're watching this. Mm. And let's pray. I want everyone here too. Let's, let's send prayers right now yes. over to that one watching. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray right now that the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it's so, I can sense His power right now. Yes. That beautiful presence of the Holy Spirit, Lord, would become manifest right now on that one watching. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would so overwhelm the viewer. Mm. Mm. Lord, right now we enter, and I want you right now as you're watching, just focus on Jesus. Just think about Jesus, and as you give your attention, your meditation to Jesus, the Holy Spirit's going to do His work. In the name of Jesus, mm. right now, I bind every stronghold of the enemy that has kept you bound. Mm. I bind every bit of discouragement. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Pastors, there's depression and anxiety that's breaking off of you right now in Jesus' yes. name. Yes. 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 I rebuke. That's, that's, the, that's the spirit that's tried to grip our nation, the spirit of fear. Right. I bind it in Jesus' name. Yes. Lord, in its place, we call upon faith. Let faith come alive in that one watching in Jesus' name. Lord, let the boldness of the Holy Spirit begin to flow. I pray, Father, that you would transform us into carriers of your glory, that, Father, in Jesus' name, we would carry your presence in such a way, Lord, that sickness would be healed, that those who are bound would go free in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we pray in our lives that you would give us that hunger, that desperation, that heart to seek your face. We pray it, we claim it, we believe it. And I want you to say it. Say amen. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' said, name we pray. Amen. 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 So, David and I are, and this audience, we, we do feel the presence of the Lord. And I want to see this. I know our time is gone, but I, I, at the same time, I want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. These are the moments now that the Holy Presence of God, the Holy Spirit, can convert from a feeling, from an ideal, into a manifestation that will alter wherever you are right now those of you that are facing cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, the cancer is not your problem, it's the fear that is fueling, if you will, that growth. And just as fear is a spirit, so is the spirit of faith. And it's here right now. And just as you've yielded to fear, you need to yield now to the Holy Spirit. Would you just begin to pray out uh, for healing? Would you do that? Uh, the anointing is very strong okay. here, and I, I, I want us to... Someone watching, there's someone actually, when, right when you said it, someone watching with the skin disorder, it's all up your left arm. I think it's psoriasis. In Jesus' name, we bind that right now. Yes. Father, let yeah. the healing waters begin to flow in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray against all forms of sickness. Lord, you broke the curse of sickness in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, we bind cancer in Jesus' name. I rebuke it now, Lord. Remove that sickness from their body in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you would cause broken bones to be mended. Lord, tendons to be healed. Lord, I come against blood disorders and heart diseases and brain disorders. Lord, healing in the eyes, healing in the mouth, healing in the hands. Lord, let us be one with you. And I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that the precious blood of Jesus, in which there is power to heal, would wash over us. And Lord, I pray right now that the miracle take place in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wow. Wow. There's a, 
There's a number on the screen and why the presence of God is flowing in. We're getting ready. Uh, Myron Butler is going to come and lead us back into worship and to praise. I want you to call on the telephone right now. Call right there and say, I, I need a healing. I'm, I feel that this is for me. If in these moments you'll let somebody pray with you, we're not asking for your money. We're not asking for your name and address. We just, this is what we're here for. It's in these moments that we have seen tens of thousands of people saved, filled with the Holy Spirit right over the phone. People healed right over the phone. Don't just sit there. You feel this now. Connect with somebody. The Bible says when one or two come together in his name, there's great power. Don't face that cancer alone. Don't face what you're going through alone. Now the word of faith has been spoken by uh, David. Now respond to it. Go to that phone. Let somebody pray with you. And let's watch God seal the deal. You know what? I got to say this. I'm so proud of you. There's a huge transition going on. I prophesied over you a few years ago. That transition is not, it's not always smooth, David. My generation's not letting go. The boomers have been uh, a very powerful generation. And as a result of that, it's hard for us to let go. But I just speak now that there's grace and there's trust and that God will bring you before great men and before great doors and before the generation and the nations because you're pure, you're hungry, you're anointed, you are a gift. The Bible says he has gifted us with evangelists and prophets and apostles and teachers. You are a gift to this generation. And when I think about TBN and I think about how many have followed and supported for 40 years, it's time for you and I now to let our hands go and lean in to the next generation. It's not going to be the way that it's always been. It wasn't when you stepped into the scene. You were different, and people didn't trust you. And now it's your time to reinvest now the trust that people gave you and lean into the next generation. And I'm just very proud of you. I love your heart. Uh, I consider you a friend. And uh, I, 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 I want to be supportive of you because as God uses you, I want to be right there with you. I want to be... Like with my cane saying, I know that guy, yeah. But give it up for David. What a great, what a great gift. And let me just encourage you, Carriers of the Glory, you can certainly get it at Amazon, uh, but you can also go to his website. This is a practical book that will help you awaken what you already have. You just need somebody to help you connect the dots between what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and what God has already invested in you.